Welcome to the Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical, and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo. Welcome to a Coffee with Karen, a cup of positivity with just a sprinkling of woo-woo. So each week on this show, my guests will discuss a topic of their choice, but based on either from a mental, a physical, or a spiritual perspective. And what happens more often than not, that most of my guests will tend to sort of incorporate all three. So my guest today is, well, Tony, I'm going to allow you to introduce yourself to the audience. If you could share with the audience who you are, what you do, and a little bit of your story. Sure. Thank you, first and foremost, for having me on your podcast and radio show and to inspire your audience. That's why we're both here. So my name is Tony J. Salimi. I'm globally known as cognition expert and business coach specializing in human behavior, the psychology of health, wealth, and success. So I travel the world working with CEOs, leaders, business owners, entrepreneurs, authors, coaches, celebrities, music stars. And I also have a five-day program called Vital Planning for Elevated Living which I teach around the world, uh, and it's very focused work where basically clients, for whatever reason, whether it's spiritual, mental, emotional, financial, business, product creation, we come together and literally I focus their entire energy in their dreams so they can actually live their dreams, love their life. Wow. Absolutely love that. And there you go. So you really are incorporating all aspects because... I don't, I don't know why we're always looking for one thing to fix one thing, right? It never works, does it? Absolutely not, because as human beings, uh, um, we are designed to enjoy our mental well-being, to be emotionally stable and fulfilled, to be financially fulfilled, to have a fulfilling relationship, to have a great career we want, to have a great lifestyle and social community, and most of all, to be able to contribute to the world. So like it or not, deep down inside of us, we are designed like that. So trying to focus in one area to fulfill will leave you disempowered in other areas. So when you meet people who are more empowered in those areas, you will feel not good about yourself. So I always recommend to people to empower all of the critical areas of your life and keep growing them. Absolutely. Great advice. So can you share with the audience a little bit about your story? How did you... How did you end up even choosing this path? <laughs> Do you have time? <laughs> 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 well, first and foremost, I was born in Macedonia, northern Macedonia. It's known today, but back then used to be uh, former Yugoslavia. And I am the youngest of six in a family of entrepreneurs. My parents were restaurateurs, and so I grew up in a in a farm, and uh, been able to contribute in the farm and pretty much. Uh, actually trying to understand life and being connected with animals. I was a beekeeper. You know, I made cheese. <laughs> I, you know, I milked the cows. I worked the wow. field. But also at the same time, I I loved school and I loved science and I loved technology. I loved, I loved biology. I loved uh, life sciences, cosmology. So I was really curious to understand life but also to really find the solution to the problems I used to see back then, where basically, you know, I saw a lot of abuse in my family. My mom was abused. My sisters were abused. My brother was abused. So, you know, there's a lot of those uh, societal issues and, you know, these inequalities just because of the creed, the race, religion you, you come from, you're not good enough. And so somebody else will tell you you're not good enough and you're being programmed all your life to think less of yourself than anybody else in society. So deep in my heart, I knew this was not right. Deep in my heart, uh, you know, both my parents uh, did all they could. They worked very hard to educate all of us. And uh, they instilled in me the values, how important it is education, not only for bettering your own life, your own family, your children, uh, the society, but actually globally. How do you present yourself as a human being in the uh, painting of the world and what is it that you're going to do but you know I experienced sexual abuse I experienced bullying at school I experienced a civil war which almost destroyed my soul and you know 
I lost a lot of people that I loved during the civil war in former Yugoslavia. And then I ended up homeless on the streets of London after my life being saved and my mother borrowing some money to put me on the last flight out of Yugoslavia into London. So I ended up homeless on the streets of London. That was about 31 years ago right now. Wow. Is it really that long? I mean, I can remember. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's really Yeah, hard. I mean, the war stopped around 2009. Uh, um, um, but, you know, the, uh, uh, the war started in the 89, 90. Right. So, and it lasted for 10 years. And, you know, of course, I learned many lessons, but it was also during this time when I lost faith in humanity. I lost faith in God. I lost faith in religion. I lost faith in anything because I could not understand as an 18 years old soldier being trained to kill and being trained to fight his own parents, his own family, his own society, the people he grew up with, how on earth can a human being um, bring themselves to destroy a society that collectively everybody worked to build? And, you know, we had the Second World War. My grandfather was in the Second World War. We knew the lessons of the Second World War. We knew what Hitler did. And suddenly we have the same genocide, the same killing in the middle of Europe, and nobody really did anything for 10 years. So all of those questions were still building inside of me, giving me this almost like fuel. How do I really heal those wounds? And how do I be a better person and go out there, inspire people to be a better version of themselves? What an incredible um, story. It does make you think when people are, oh, my goodness, complaining about X, Y, Z, and they nobody's come anywhere close to having to deal with something as intense and traumatic as that so I mean how did you I mean you know for for a lot of people you'd think how do you bounce back from experiencing all of that so what was the turning point for you I think turning points been through my entire life Karen through every adversity I had there was a turning point and then you know it seemed like when you go somewhere on holiday and you never know what to expect you know you go there you find something and suddenly somebody tells you go somewhere else and suddenly you find something else and you find something else so you know turning point comes after you overcome every adversity but you know being homeless on the streets of london for six months i i don't think i would i had left any more tears to shred of trying to cope with the emotional uh, i would say um, backlog of what happened to me during the civil war and in former Yugoslavia, leaving my family behind, leaving everybody I love behind and trying to understand my mother's decision to save my life, yet I wanted to save my family's life. So, you know, all of those things and also this desire that I had since I was a child to go out in the world and teach and educate people kept me almost, it was like a candlelight for me. So, you know, when I was living on the streets, all the people were leaving me books. I was reading every book somebody left me uh, underneath the bridges of River Thames. And, you know, my desire to uh, get back into education and create my life back and have some form of normality kept me almost like 20 hours a day trying to solve things in my head. What is the next step? And the next logical step was to really try to get back myself into finding a job so I can actually earn some money and then use that money to educate myself, which I did for almost eight years. I self-funded myself and I graduated from one of the top universities, uh, top five, frankly, University College London with an engineering degree and organizational behavior and management, which I wanted to go back into fast track and combine two different things, which I always loved. One is psychology, one is business and science and technology and engineering and, you know, being able to provide solution to problems. So I've always been a problem solver. So, you know, as I overcame a lot of the adversities, as you can imagine, for somebody coming into this country, I, I couldn't even speak English. I'm still learning, but, you know... <laughs> It's, I could only say hello, and uh, my name is Tony, that's it. And uh, overcoming all of those challenges, but also overcoming the challenges back then that the home office would give to immigrants and to refugees. And they didn't really make your life easy. Knowing you know, how difficult it must be for a child, nonetheless, the adults, home office made it very difficult for not just me, but for anybody back then, uh, to actually really uh, stabilize themselves in order for you to move forward. 
So I, and I made a decision. I said, if I have to wait for home office to try to get the refugee status and try to get all these benefits that so-called pie in the sky benefits for migrants, I will never get my life back on track. So basically I focused having three, four jobs every single day for almost 10 years and using that portion of money to go back and pay for my university, pay for my higher national diploma so I can get back myself on track. And when I graduated, I got one of the uh, great jobs. I started working for um, uh, what's become now uh, uh, TFL, Traffic uh, Directors for London. Mm -hmm. So I was actually involved in big uh, technology programs. And then my technology career really took off. And, you know, I worked both in public and private sectors, started traveling around the world and managing multi-million, multi-billion pound technology transformation programs and also people management and recruiting people and, you know, doing all those wonderful things that really started shaping me and bringing me back into that hard desire, that, which I had since I was a kid. How do I combine all the knowledge, all the experience, all the lessons, everything I've learned for the better benefit of others? And this literally happened in, uh, after the financial crash in 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. when I was actually made redundant. And one of my friends committed suicide as a result of the like Lehman Brothers uh, going down. And that was a huge wake up call for me that saying, you know, how do I take back control of my own life? After 20 years, after going through all this adversity, when I suddenly felt I'm at the top of the world, being able to support and, lo and love the, all the people I care. Suddenly, my entire what? life went crashed again, back to the bottom, back to almost being on the street, losing my mortgage, uh, my flat and stuff like that. And, you know, it really was a, the biggest turning point in my life. And I actually did another mini MBA course through which I actually wrote my first book, A Path to Wisdom. And in that book, I pretty much I combined science. I combined all the different philosophies, psychology, cognitive behavior, NLP, uh, and all the things that helped me on the journey to transform my life. And also, while I was working in the corporate world and working with many companies and actually delivering everything on time, on budget, and actually you know, creating a team spirit and actually bringing spirituality without using the word spirituality in the business world. And back then, it was very difficult even to mention that. But nowadays, we're becoming more open to it and more companies actually bring people into that to bring mindfulness. We call it mindfulness, you know. But the reality, I always wanted to bring spirituality in science, spirituality in leadership, in business, so people can actually be the best version of themselves and they don't feel all the pressures and being burned out and being less productive, uh, less open, less communicative, and less actually efficient in the work environment and less stress and burnout because when you come home, you cannot be a good partner if you have a job like that. So a path to wisdom was really simply created uh, as a solution, as a call to globally all the people who are suffering through three things. One was uh, health. A lot of people lose their health on this process of establishing themselves, uh, career, bringing some wealth, maybe paying a mortgage, whatever it might be. So the relationships. So they become extremely ill. So I wanted a book and a methodology that help people get back into perfect health so they can actually have a great life. And the other thing I wanted people to have is to understand the importance of life-work balance, not work-life balance, a life-work balance. And how important it is that only for your being because we, are, you know, we have this very short period in this world and we get bombarded by daily problems by everything that's expected of us and truly forgetting the most important person in the equation, which is you. And the other part is basically most people, even today, people don't have inner peace. You know, everybody I meet, wherever I travel, no matter what client I work, no matter what profession, no matter how high up they are in the corporate world, no matter what status they have in society, they struggle with having that inner peace where you feel at peace with yourself. So I spent almost like 12 weeks in meditation and trying to co uh, combine and extract the best lessons out of my almost 40 years of my life that basically took me through so many turns, so many corners, so many advertisements that sometimes when I look at the mirror, I say, how on earth and I'm still alive. And I'm having this lifestyle today where I go around the world and help people. 
So I still I question myself around that. So and the intuitively, what really came together was that we all, as powerful human beings, we have this inner alarm, and this inner alarm that comes constantly tells us where we're not in alignment with who we are. And when we're not in alignment with who we are, we cannot be in alignment with anybody else. So, you know, the method which I created is the GSE method, and the acronym is ALONG. Acknowledge love, achieve results, create miracles. And, you know, life is a miracle. And if life is a miracle, if I can help people awaken that miracle gene, miracle DNA in themselves, they can create their dreams. So when I wrote the first book, this is where I basically um, left the corporate world and suddenly I had clients from around the world reaching out for different issues, whether it's personal issues, mental issues, OCD, emotional issues, relationship problems, business, building wealth, uh, whatever it was, people start coming and reaching out to book consultation, books my training, and start attending my seminars and workshops. And that really started really aligning what, as a child, I used to dream, which was to write a life manual so people can experience life in a crystal clear vision. So you actually, you don't have any doubts or fears about who you are. And also I wanted to help people become architects of their minds. So because, you know, our mind is what generates consistently every single day the reality we live in. And not to be able to you know, uh, succumb to the situations outside of you or whatever is happening around the world, how do you remain stable in your own self to be able to manage all of those things and navigate life and actually serve through life in a way that constantly you create amazing experiences for you, but also those you serve and people you love. So this is what became a path to wisdom, how to live a balanced, healthy, peaceful life. And then it became eight times international bestseller won over 15 global awards. And then as I traveled globally, I suddenly realized there's another huge problem that most people are not really tackling. And the second problem is the loneliness that like a virus was spreading through social media, through people are creating, you know, almost like fake personalities showing to the world. You go to the airport, nobody's speaking. You go into the underground, nobody's speaking. You go on a bus, nobody's speaking. I used to go into big offices and train. People in the same team did not know who the other person was. They just used to emailing and telephone. So then I wrote the second book called Hashtag Loneliness, The Virus of the Modern Age, which then again went global. And we, as a result of those two books, I ended up being over 750 TV and radio stations across the world sharing the story, sharing the lessons. And from there, then a group of people, leaders from uh, different professions, we put a uh, um, a book together around one of the big problems which I wrote, which is about burnout that happens in healthcare. Because I have my partner is a, a heart surgeon, and I have a lot of clients who are doctors. I have some uh, uh, other healthcare professionals who I coach. So I started really realizing all the different issues we have in the healthcare profession and also in the business, in the leadership. So I actually wrote something called Fit for Purpose Leadership Book Three with some other experts, and together we put our best thought. And that also became a bestseller. And then I started writing my latest book, which is The Unfakeable Code. Uh, here we go. Can, can uh, you repeat that? Sorry, what was it called? Uh, the Unfakeable Code. The yeah. Unfakeable cool. And the reason I wrote The Unfakeable Code, as COVID closed every single border, a lot of people became felt fearful, powerless, out of control, lost their job, were put in furlough. And also a lot of fears, a lot of anxiety, depression, domestic violence went up, abuse went up. So I literally sit down and said, since I'm not traveling this much, I'm going to write something why people are doing all of those things that they feel fully disempowered. And then they look outwardly to attack somebody else who's totally innocent. And one of the things that came up, again, I always go back into meditation. I ask God, universe, whatever you believe. I just ask higher self, the spirit. I said, guide me into what is the next big solution I want to provide to humanity. So, you know, the answer was around, first of all, we, we looked how politics really can damage every human being, how wrong uh, leaders and what's going on in the agenda. We looked at what Brexit did to our country. We looked at what Donald Trump did. 
we look at uh, this extremism that started going around the world like a stop without really realizing that how damaging that is to all of us. And, you know, the world is the only home we all share. And also we're talking about the environment. We're talking about all those impacts and what kind of world we're going to leave to the future generations. And one of the things that came out is how inauthentic those leaders are yeah. and how we've normalized lies. And although yeah. uh, today we have technology, we capture those lies of those people who share them, still people no longer care that the fact that somebody is telling a lie. And for me, uh, that goes on a personal level when we tell all those lies to ourselves for whatever reason we're trying to uh, make ourselves feel better, no matter where it is, we tell others. And then without even realizing, those lies become our truths. And we go far away from being authentic. So the Unpeakable Code is really about how to help people take back that control of their mind, of their emotions, of their dialogue that happens inside of themselves, the negative self-talk, the self-deception that is a powerful mechanism that we built over the years of trauma. Right. And ritually, how do we lead authentically in the world so we can actually better humanity? And then how do we lead really on our terms, nobody else's terms? And the book was published in May, end of April. And since then, already won four global literary awards. And uh, two weeks ago also became uh, international bestseller in five different categories in Amazon. Wow. That so that's a bit awesome. of summary of the stuff. And then that's also the for those spiritually enlightened and people who seek spirituality, I was also asked to contribute to this book, Novel 10 Publishing, where for the first time I'm publishing my selection of spiritually challenged uh, 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 poems. And those ritually poems are uh, written. They will go into 12 different books. It will be a book for every month for those who are seeking spiritual growth. And it will be around 360 people who changed my life. And each poem is dedicated to a specific person. And the idea behind that is for you to take that poem and, and unlock it, unlock the wisdom within you. So you can own those wonderful traits of these people that changed my life. Wow. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, you talk about being, I mean, the word, the word authentic, being authentic is being thrown around so much these days. It's almost like a, a like a buzzword. So really the authenticity advantage or say linking objective thinking to healthier and happier life. Why do you think the real reason in sort of more modern era that people have become less authentic? You know, what, what do you think has been the catalyst for that? I think the catalyst is for sure the environment in which we live in and whatever happens in that environment. And for instance, you know, um, I've been in so many different environments. I lived in Macedonia, I lived in Croatia, I lived in Switzerland. I lived in uh, US and I lived in UK. So each environment can contribute in your psychology. And mm -hmm. it's fine for the things that you are consciously aware. But unfortunately, 80% of our reality is being generated by our subconscious mind, which you have zero awareness until you work with some trained profession, uh, professional who through different processes and methods can really bring those stored information in your subconscious mind into your conscious awareness where a change can happen. Now, imagine 8 billion people having those experiences in their subconscious mind. And imagine all of that being almost like spread like a virus into the collective consciousness. And then we wonder why certain leaders emerge from certain countries. Why? Because collective consciousness, it's at that level. Now, when you have more aware people, those aware people, they're going to uh, select an aware leader. But sometimes it's a process of life, the yin and yang. We have to have the trouble in order for us to really create the order. We have to create the chaos to have the order. We have to have the war to have the peace and to appreciate the peace. But there's a better way we can actually grow as individuals, where we actually see those uh, sides of life that life has given us by design to be able to integrate them into a beautiful, authentic individual. and from that space, being able to serve humanity. So, you know, you go to school, you're being programmed a certain way. 
you go on yeah. social media, you program yourself in a certain way, certain appearance, certain language, certain stuff. You meet the person, two different people. You know, you go on a date, you put your best mask. You know, yeah. I've never seen anybody go on a date with their pajamas. <laughs> okay. And just be the worst part of yourself when you wake up in the morning. So, you know, we create all of those pressures around trying to show an identity. Uh, I, I wouldn't call it identity, a persona. This is what I'm talking about in the unfakeable code. There's a difference between a persona and an individual. So we bring all those different personas to satisfy the different needs that we want outside and potentially get something back as a result. Maybe get the second date, maybe get a job, maybe get an interview, maybe get a friend, maybe get something, but always seeking for something. But what if you show up authentically who you are and being loved authentically for who you are, leading authentically for who you are with a great vision, with great authentic values that drive you in terms, in, into something which is very beautiful because you are beautiful, your life is beautiful, your spirit is beautiful. And most people have forgotten that you are magnificent by design. So my Absolutely. true calling is really bringing people into their true divinity. And you cannot get into your true divinity with so many masks. You have to richly remove those masks and truly be your divine self when you show up with anybody, not just with the people you like, but also with the people who challenge you and the people you dislike. And that's the challenge for most people, not being able to learn to bring their best version when they are most challenged. And that's what all those, some of the experience I shared with you have taught me. And one of the principles in the unfakeable code, which is principle number five, which all of the people, I've, I've had almost like 2,000 people sending me messages. And it's one of the most wanted principles that they want to live their life by, which is um, let your heart be the only military commander that wins every battle in your life. And if people were to take that, that one single principle, and you apply it in every single area of your life, I guarantee you 100% your life will change. Oh, and what a world we would live in. But we've almost all been conditioned throughout life in different, various different societies to always focus on the head. You know, it's always the, the, the thought process, right? And, and I do think it is wonderful what you're, what you're doing. And I think that there's so many now people that are really focusing on, no, it's, it's all about the heart. It's got, it's got to come from a heart-centred place. Because, um, you know, and that's where, yeah, that's where magic happens. So you're really encompassing the whole, again, it's it's all about holistic, uh, how, looking at everything in a holistic point of view. We live in such a world where this person says their way is the right way and that person is, ah, oh, my way is the right way. And they're all fighting amongst themselves. And, and, and the reality is, as you just explained there with everything that you do, it's never one thing. It's got to be looked at, at holistic, holistically. So if we just start with a person's general health, you know, at the end of the day, you know, why do we get ill in the first place? And what do you feel are some of the major contributing factors? One of the greatest contributing fa factors is our psychology. You know, I, 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 I worked for 30 years and researched for 30 years, different books, different disciplines, uh, and studied around the human body and how human body can become ill just as a matter of uh, what perceptions you hold towards life and what traumas you've had and experiences you've had and all of those what's stored in your head. Most people, you know, if you take people, most people have a busy head. They have a head full of noise. Now, we know, scientifically we know, that a word can impact your body. One single word. And if it's one single word, daily we have 80,000 uh, words that we think every single day. And uh, also there's a scientific proof out there and more and more research that out of this 80,000, almost 85% is negative self-talk. And now if you are allowing that every single day, not bringing yourself daily in this equilibrium, sooner or later, your body will respond to exactly what you are programming it to be. So, you know, most people see the end result, the effect. They're not listening to the alarm from the beginning. 
So the first alarm is actually being with yourself and actually really self-reflecting. What am I thinking today? Am I thinking something that uh, heals my body or am I thinking something that damages my body? People don't even ask this simple question, Karen. No. So when I work with clients who have health challenges, uh, you know, I get them back, I strip them back naked to where it all started. And unless you, you, you equilibrate those memories and balance them out, your psychology will consistently kill your body. Your subconscious mind does not have righteousness, does not have a moral compass. Your subconscious mind is like a, in technology, we call it an executable. You just click it and executes. And what's yep. inside of it, nobody knows apart from the programmer. And the programmer, it's ourselves. Yeah. There so, we go. you know, well, as an engineer, we I, don't know. We don't know. Yes, as an engineer, I want you to really help people recode their mind. And that's why the unpackable code. Why? Because you have codes that you've built all throughout your life. And there's a way to reprogram them, just the way we reprogram computers, just the way we update our computers. And the funny thing is, you've been conditioned as a human being to update your phone, update your clothes, update your apartment, everything to be outside of you up to date. But most people don't invest to update themselves every single day. And that's where the change needs to happen, whether it's when it comes to health, when it comes to uh, leadership, when it comes to business, entrepreneurship, when it comes to family life, social life, when it comes to uh, children, when it comes to the global problems we're having. Because, you know, a person who elevates their mind elevates their life. Oh, love that so much. And it is just so, so true. People will spend more money on updating their car and getting their car MOT'd and, and then and then no focus is, is on themselves. So Yes, I mean, I was recently in Macedonia. I did, um, uh, I started doing my second documentary called Into Your Divinity. And this is basically, it's telling the stories of my clients who do my five or 10 day program and bringing it together so it supports them also by sharing their pain, their lessons, their growing, their transformation for others to grow. But at the same time, for building their brand, bringing their uh, uh, identity around the world, uh, bringing their influence, and also impacting more people. So it's almost like win-win-win situation. And one of the clients who approached me and said, okay, can you give me a discount? And I said, no. You know, you can work with somebody else, but I have your desire to actually uh, downgrade my uh, work 30 years where people, it changes your life. And I said, uh, let's, say, let's say you went to hospital and your child had uh, a heart attack and you need the best surgeon to operate on your heart. Would you go for a nurse? No, definitely And not. straight away she cried and straight away she said to me, I will find the money. I'll see you tomorrow. There you go. So, you know, if you want the best, be prepared to pay the best prices. Uh, you know, I have built myself as an expert for 30 years. And if you want the expert, then that goes with a price. And the question I always say to people, uh, you know, uh, the people who say, I don't have money, I ask them a very simple question. What if you change your psychology and you ask yourself, what is it I need to do to make this happen? That's a whole different change in psychology. Because if we say, I, I can't afford it, I can't this, you remain totally disempowered financially. And when you are disempowered financially, someone else who's financially empowered will always empower you. And therefore, your decision, your choices, the way you look at life will transform. And unfortunately, for the worse, not for the better. So financial empowerment is part of the equation. And I always say to people, you know, if you want to live like the greatest people, you need to spend like the greatest people. Absolutely. Fantastic advice. And it is. So basically, <clears throat> what you're saying there is, yeah, know your worth. Know your worth, absolutely. Know your worth. So, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I, I, and, and, and I love what you're sharing here. I'm a, yeah, wholeheartedly believe, you know, everything is is, is vibration. And some people, they just can't see it. They're just, they're just vibrating on a, very, uh, on a lower frequency. So what lowers, what other things, what lowers our vibration and why is that important? What, what impact does that have on our lives? I think what people uh, want to understand, like if I look at uh, the work of Nikola Tesla, for instance, he sold the world to energy, vibration, and time. Now, how you spend your time determines who you become. How you spend your energy 
determines how well you are in the process of becoming. And your vibration is what richly connects with the universe. You know, universe is a vibrational place, meaning whatever vibration you send out, you will get back. And if we look at the laws, the universal laws that govern life, for, govern life, which is something I'm talking about in my upcoming book, I'm now writing another book called A Path to Excellence for people who really want to pursue excellence. I'm also talking about the law of karmas, and I, I'm simplifying that for people to understand how that works in your life. And law of karma and vibration work very nicely together. So whatever you put out, you, uh, you put back in. But unfortunately, most people don't realize that those 80% of negative thoughts in their head they're consistently pulling out. On one hand, they want to raise the money. On the other hand, they say to themselves, I can't afford this. So they create consistent yeah, cancellation of their vibration. So <clears throat> most people find it very difficult to remain in that vibration. And all you have to observe is, Karen, you just go on, uh, uh, on the street, go on the tube, go on the seminars, talks, and you will see how people vibration changes consistently depending on the environment. So if they meet somebody nice, their vibration is suddenly positive and everything else, they get elated by this person, by their success. And then if you meet somebody low, you go low with them. Yeah. So, you we know, tend, we it, tend to react. Until we, to, we, are we are reactive aware. being, absolutely. Yeah. So this is why beings. it is essential for people to take back control. And most of my clients have been reading those books and there have been millions, over a million people who, who purchased them. Uh, they're actually starting to really decipher every sentence in the book. Because the clients who I work privately, my VIP clients, they know I can take one sentence and I, I can coach them entire day around that sentence to awaken that wisdom in themselves. Wow. So, you know, for instance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, I'll share one verse from uh, my latest poetry. Mm -hmm. So they are actually called uh, uh, same as the first chapter in the book, The Unfakeable Code. So take off the mask, your soul is waiting. Now, if you just think about that, you will start to really uh, uh, get a, a different awareness of who you are. Because currently, most people identify themselves with the body, with the reality they live in. but Unfortunately, most people, they never, never go on a soul transformation journey. And most people actually speak of the soul through the mind. And what the mind has learned, what the soul is, which is mm -hmm. totally different to actually understanding matter, which is the material world, to actually understanding spirit, which is the spiritual world. Two different worlds separated by a veil. And you can never explore the spiritual world if your mind is actively into these self-negative talks and you haven't really empowered the mind in a way that becomes calm like an ocean. It's so interesting that uh, it is all about, like we say, you know, it is, like you said about people, you know, people are coming around to this with the mindfulness thing and we're coming to this conclusion that actually, yes, when we quieten the mind, there's so much chitter-chatter up here that's actually keeping us uh, maybe not separated as such, but distracted from the real. Yeah, and I suppose that, yeah, it's the feeling. And I suppose it's, it is all about that being heart-centered and it's just being, being, yeah, simply being and having that feeling place. And, and I do hope that, you know, I do think people are sort of, more and more coming round to this truth because whether they believe it or not is irrelevant because a truth is a truth. The universal law is a universal law. You don't have to know it, believe it, understand it, whatever. However, to get through this thing called life, wouldn't it be much easier if we were to work with the universal laws than pushing against them? <laughs> It yes, I mean, a lot of people, Karen, are doing that unconsciously, frankly, because, you know, so. everybody, I believe every human being has the capacity to achieve anything they want. And that's what really inspires me to go around the world and work with different clients. To give you an example, uh, one of my clients, Tammy Demirza, you probably may see her on Facebook quite a lot with me. She travels around the world to do because my work is one to one or one to like a small group. 
And when she started, uh, she met me. I was doing a talk with Jack Canfield in US, in uh, Houston, Texas. And after I delivered my talk, I pretty much was talking about social media and the importance of you showing up authentically as you are, wherever you are, without having to put the makeup or all those things that people do to go on camera. And be authentic with your audience, no matter what you do. So not having the fears that unless you have makeup, people are going to like you. Unless you're dressed up in a certain way, people are not going to like you. You know, I do a broadcast when I'm in the swimming pool with my clients, when we are on the gym, when we are on the running, wherever we are, I just put the camera and I start talking. <laughs> so, you know, and of course, I also have when I get dressed up and do the wonderful things. But all part of that is you showing up authentically with your audience. So she approached me at the end of the uh, workshop. And this is when I published uh, the hashtag loneliness book. And I did a lot of speaking engagements. Uh, so she went like, I don't know who you are, but just the energy and the vibration you radiated in the room, everybody loved you. I want you to be my mentor and my business coach. And I went like, okay. And uh, she went like, how much do you cost? And I told her, and she went like, that's my entire salary in five days. <laughs> and I went like, if your heart desires, your mind will create it. And I left her. I continued doing book signing. Now, fast forward three months down the line, Somehow, she attracted the money, and she came to me, did her first vital planning experience in Jamaica. And in that five days, the money that she came to her actually didn't came directly from a client, came from somebody she was dating who wanted her to grow. And so the potential in her. So yeah. this guy called me up and said, I'm going to pay for her. I want you to coach her because she has the potential. And I said, I know that. I already told her that. So she started the work. In five days, I transformed her entire psychology because she did a lot of intuitive work uh, 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 with people and a lot of uh, spiritual work. However, you know, she doesn't have credibility. She doesn't have science background. She doesn't have university. She doesn't have all the things, the elements that can help you build your business. So I started really, the first thing is started rebranding her to be more inauthentic what she does and clarify her message clarify her emailing systems, clarifying what the website was saying, clarifying what she truly does for people and create a process that she can use consistently to create the results for her. Now, as we finish the five-day training, in the next six weeks and while in the training, she actually manifests it and created the money for the next training. And fast forward, she, she does four times a year, 10 days with me privately, plus I coach her monthly. I, I took her from almost being 50,000 in debt to now making a million pound. There you go. A See woman, you. a woman, 62 years old, a grandmother oh. of four. And most women in, in her shoes are sitting at home feeling disempowered and thinking they have nothing to give to society. So <laughs> as a result of that, I also offered her to be one of my stars in my new documentary, Into Your Divinity. And uh, the, the first documentary, it's called um, Dancing with Pain. Why? Because for the last three years, I've been doing a lot of healing work for her while I'm building her business. And some of the things that have come up is every woman in the world will be in tears. Because I know her story matters, and I know how stories are so powerful tools to transform people's lives. Not everybody can afford experts, for instance, but you can watch, you can read, you can go on YouTube, you can buy a book, everybody can buy a book, and you can start the process. And when you're ready, hire the best person you can with mm -hmm. the finances you have, or do anything you can to bring the finances to hire somebody who can really, truly change your life. And this is what happened with Tammy. She believed in everything I was doing with her, and she just said to me at the end of the uh, first seminar we did, she went like, you see me. And she just burst it into tears. She said, for the first time in my life, I met somebody who sees me. And, you know, most people are not being seen. And many of my clients, they actually put the label on me, calling, they're calling me the see-through coach, which means I see through all of the disempowered behaviors, all of the crap you're telling me, everything, all the language you're using, and going straight into your heart, straight into your mind, straight into your soul, and then channel what is it that you're here to do with your life. Love that. Absolutely love that. So you're fully working intuitively. It's just coming through you. Awesome. Yes, I mean, both intuitively 
And also, as I said, because of the uh, amount of uh, work I've done, research and science and stuff like that, I've combined all of that and I've created a very unique process that I teach every my client and the results have been consistent through all of that. And what connects all of them, most people live their life without a plan. You know, you don't just show up at the airport without searching what holiday you want to go to, without buying the ticket, without uh, knowing that you're going to love where you get. Equally, yeah. most people, most businesses, they don't have clear plans of the results and the growth they want to experience, whether it's mentally, emotionally, financially, whether it's impact, whether it's contribution. Most people that I work with, none of them have a clear plan. So vital planning, it's truly a, a transformative experience that, uh, you know, I've been running in the, now for eight years, traveling around the world, teaching this. And it's really something that inspired me, something helped me, because actually I created this as part of my transformation. And I said, you know, when I worked in technology, you have to have plans for everything. You know, when you work with uh, projects like that, programs like that, you have to have like a uh, plan for a financial plan, how you're going to spend all the money. You have to have a backup plan. You have to have a disaster recovery plan and something needs to happen. You have to have a, a team plan. How are you going to do it? So planning, it's key thing. And I see why most people in the world, they never achieve what they can achieve without having a clear plan of how they're going to go from point A to point B. And where do you think this comes from? I mean, all these, you know, sayings, you know, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. We know this on some level, you know, and and businesses, companies, well, they're, they'd never have growth if they didn't have a plan. Why do you think it's when it seems to, perception is, when it comes to an individual, the lack of planning? I mean, you know, you go and buy a franchise, I suppose that's what you're paying for, isn't it? You're 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 paying, you're paying the whole thing, yes. Somebody else done it for, for it. you. Yeah. And 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 it, it, it does just fascinate me that we sort of know on a certain level because we have been told this a few times, even from school, maybe. But yet the bottom line is that the majority of the people are still not doing it. Just like you know, every coach on the planet has said at one point, you know, write your goals down. Yeah, Have you dated busy. somebody, Karen, that you knew is the wrong person for you? Have I what? Sorry? Have you dated somebody that you knew it was the wrong person for you? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. You know, I can give you many examples of why we as human beings do things which are counterintuitive. Go on, so then. we're not truly listening to that intuition. And most people, no matter what the problems uh, my clients present to me, when I start asking about 10 questions, they straight away get it. Sometimes it takes me more, but through questioning, I bring them to the realization that they never listened in the first place, the alarm they had within, no matter what the problem was. And as I clarify for them and I start building a map, usually the walls around me, when I train now, it's almost like you, you see the Einstein. So some of my clients, they call me the modern Einstein. So it's all in writing. So you can't really avoid your shit. And I'm sorry for using that word, but reality is we tend to avoid, we build those avoiding behaviors. And most of those avoiding behaviors, and I talk about it in the Unpackable Code, uh, are unconscious. Of course. You know, they are. you know, a lot of the things that we do are unconscious. You know, you're not telling your heart to pump blood, do you? No. Thank goodness, I'd forget. Okay, Digesting our food. We're not sitting in there and telling our stomach digest the food. No. So there's this beautiful intelligence inside of us that does things which are great for us, but also does things that can damage us. And this is where I always say, always, I, I promote to have a mentor, coach, uh, therapist, healer, whatever you want to have in your life. And I promote that for adults, for businesses, even for children, for families, for you know people, no matter who you are, I believe having an Somebody out there to help you, support you, will change your life. Because something that my parents always invested in me, they always had private tutors. On top of what I was learning, because I was, in a sense, advanced uh, a student since I was a kid. You know, I was always learning ahead of anybody in my generation. And I always connected with more elderly people. And I wanted to squeeze their knowledge. I wanted to learn. I always had this um, a deep thirst for knowledge and for learning and for 
uh, creating solutions, no matter what they are, and for repairing things. You know, at the age of seven, I used to repair electronics. Everybody in my community in Macedonia will bring their electronics. And my parents' garage, I had all the tools to repair all the electronics. Nobody taught me. Wow. It's almost like I knew how to do it. Right. Awesome. I mean, like, it's just phenomenal to, to speak to somebody that really has in, encompassed absolutely everything. You know, you, I speak to people that are doing that part of the puzzle and that part of the puzzle and that part of the puzzle. But for somebody like that yourself that really has got that science background and that engineering skill that I suppose that's where you're you know you're going to be so amazing at the planning side of it combined with all of it and and and, and really that that's got to be the way forward isn't it I do think that vibrational healing is definitely the way forward I mean as something that, that um, um, I did notice on one of the things you put that, that I am a, a another huge believer in a lot of people make a decision for themselves that, that, you know, it's impossible to move forward, that whatever that thing is, it's incurable, whether it's illness or whether it's a situation that they're in. I mean, what is it? So, I mean, I know the answer to this, really, but what is your opinion on that to share with the audience? I think, Karen, it's when the pain becomes too big, no matter what that pain is, we have two choices. One is to go towards it and solve it. And one is to run away from it. And most people choose the latter. They run away from it. And they think that things will get better in the future. No, your body will consistently retaliate against you for not addressing whatever pains you. That's why I, I, I named the uh, first documentary, because I also have another documentary called Live in My Illusion, which won over 20 global awards, The Truth Hurts. Uh, which is all about the lies we tell ourselves, and it's all about relationships and the impact that has on a leadership and a business level and the family level. So that's already on Amazon. This one, it's about really focused around so much pain we experience, but we tend to almost brush it off. One is from shame. One is from guilt. One is from embarrassment. Uh, one is like what people will think. One is from rejection. One is from abandonment. Whatever reasons that we give to ourselves, that will never go away because your body is like a computer, like the hard disk in the computer will store all of that in there. And as I said before, conscious and subconscious, they both play an important role in your reality. And when you have all of those decisions that we make, like final decision, I will never do this. Uh, when you have those extremes, you know, I will never be in love again, you know. I will never date somebody. I will never do this or do that. You, you're actually reprogramming your subconscious mind. And that's not into your awareness when other things happen to you and you keep sabotaging and you keep feeling stuck, not knowing why you feel stuck. Yeah. This is the perfect time. Seek out the expert. Yeah. Because, you know, I always say it. to people, if your life hasn't changed by now and you're trying everything, you're trying all these free tools, do whatever you want to create it. <laughs> I was homeless. I worked three, four jobs, and I never made an excuse. I don't have money not to educate myself. So I created the money. I worked every job. I used to clean the streets. I would clean toilets. I would clean the neighborhood. Uh, I would uh, carry the shopping bags from people, elderly people from the supermarkets. I never asked for money. People gave me money for the service I gave them. So when people say to me they don't have money, my response is, you don't have a service. Absolutely. If you have a service, you will always have money. And then use that money to keep growing yourself, get the experts to get you to the next level. There you go. And so many people, it's just the focus is on take, 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 rather than the focus being serve, serve, serve. Amazing. So for the listeners, <clears throat> I mean, if you wherever you're watching or hearing this, there will be uh, all Tony's links so that you can get hold of him. But if you're just listening on the radio, um, Tony, how can people get in touch with you? Because um, that is absolutely fascinating. And if people really have, and I, and I so believe that, that, yeah, if you've got up to where you're at now and you're not getting not getting anywhere, trust me, you need a coach. <laughs> you're not going <laughs> to do it by yourself anymore. Just, you know, give up on that one. So how would they get in touch with you? 
Uh, the first thing is people can learn about me is simply Google me, Tony J. Salimi. You'll have all my information. But people can go to TonySalimi.com. That's T-O-N-Y-S-E-L-I-M-I.com. And in there, they can find all the links to my books, to the work that I do, to more about my bio. Uh, and I, I also, when I have time, I share a lot of blogs and I share a lot of videos. I can subscribe to my YouTube channel for people who are not perhaps ready to go at this level and work at this level. So I always, people start usually with my first book, then they go through all of the books, they do the exercises. And in that process, something changes and transforms and they go further. But for people who are ready, they simply need to go through my PA. Uh, who wants to book the first initial consultation, info at tonysalimi.com. And my PA always instantly, within 24 hours, she always responds to people. So, you know, uh, there are many ways people can connect with me. Uh, they can follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. So I have many Facebook pages, depending on which project I have, where basically people from different backgrounds come together, they share information. And so there's many ways people can come forward. Awesome. Okay. So, I mean, really, what I've really taken from today's conversation about <clears throat> really being authentic and that, you know, at the end of the day, we all do it. We all have a mask that we put on for, a, you know, it can change, right? <laughs> for different situations. I can, um, I can put a certain mask on in certain environments. We all do it to a degree. However, the real thing is about what from what you've just been sharing is that really just being totally honest and open with yourself and connecting with yourself. So what are what would you say are some of the of the real consequences of hiding behind the mask the whole time? I think the main one, Karen, which we both can agree on, it's your health your physical, mental, and emotional health. And in, we've seen like now a lot of people are coming together to actually bring forward the importance of mental health. And mental health is also physical health and it's also emotional health. So the, the key, key drawback of all of this, if you're not really doing the work, is impacts your health and your health is your wealth. You know, I've seen so many people, I worked with clients who are billionaires who pretty much going through cancer, uh, uh, their children going through diff difficulties health-wise, through addictions. I've, uh, I've helped many people break through addictions. And unfortunately, in certain uh, levels of uh, success, a lot of people turn to drugs to cope with the pressures and the demands of their jobs. So, you know, I work with a lot of people to even remove and clear out their life, pretty much. And uh, the other part is basically, you know, uh, uh, it will impact your finances for sure. You know, if you don't have mental and emotional stability, you will never be able to grow your wealth. And whether we like it or not, we live in a material world, in a material world where it has a material demands on your life. And also, if you have family, if you have children, if you have dependents, all these people depend on you. So, you know, it will impact your ability to grow wealth, build wealth and create a service for people. So the other part, it will impact your, the quality of your life. It will impact your social life, but not just that. It will reduce your productivity. You'll feel tired. You'll feel burnout. You'll, have, uh, you'll feel depression. I mean, depression is huge globally. You know, I've seen in America where children as young as eight, nine are being prescribed depression pills. Oh. So I've worked with clients that I had to remove, spend <clears throat> with them two weeks to be able to transform their psychology, family psychology, in order for them to really see what they are doing. Most people are blinded to all of those external things that we take to try to make ourselves feel good internally. For me, it's an inside-out job. Wow. I use the outer reality to transform my inner reality. <clears throat> so, you know, when you transform your inner self, your outer reality transforms. So, you know, I could go on how bad it is for when we actually not truly giving permission to ourselves to listen to our alarm and to rise to our authentic being and become magnificent, be that which you are already by design. Awesome. You know, when we see all the wars out there in the world, now through COVID, we had many people who are divorcing. We had many people who had domestic abuse. We have many children who have been abused. You know, all of those societal problems, they all stem down from your own psychology. So totally. that's why it's so key for people to continue to learn. Uh, somebody who's uh, both uh, a student of life and a teacher of life, 
I always believe in learning and growing and also sharing what you master. So when you master something, you are ready to be a great teacher. Love that. Oh, Tony, I could we I could listen to you and listen to you and listen to you. Thank you so much for your time today. It has been an absolute honor. Um, so thank you so much. Anybody listening, please get in touch. You know, there it, you this is life changing. We are talking about um uh you know doing the work you know it's not going to happen overnight but doing the work is life changing so thank you for your time to the listeners um guys uh until next week on a coffee with karen thank you for listening thank you so much for having me on your show and thank you for your service welcome to the coffee with karen podcast a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs from a mental, physical and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo.